Hello everyone, welcome to Remote Sensing and GIS for Rural Development in PTL course. This is week four, lecture one. Let's quickly look at what we have been looking at in the past weeks and how it connects to this week because we are starting a new lecture. Up to week three, we were looking at various remote sensing open source data some Indian sources, example, Bhuvan, and some foreign sources, example, NASA, were discussed. And we looked at specifically data for water, soil, and climate. These would be incorporated into rural development schemes. And once you know to retrieve these important data, water, soil, and climate, you could also retrieve the other less complex data such as images, land use, land cover, etc. Then we also stopped on the need for GIS and a very short intro for QGIS was given. The need for GIS comes again from understanding that we have plethora of data, satellites, remote sensing, near sensing, crowdsourcing data. We need to convert that into a usable format. And the platform that helps us to achieve this is GIS. There are multiple GIS platforms, but we want to promote through this lecture series an open source software. And the one we have identified is QGIS. It is one of the largest open source mapping software used in the world. And even governments are using, as I mentioned. So we will, in this week, we will give a more in-depth introduction to GIS while installing the QGIS software. The installation takes approximately 45 minutes if we have good internet. So we won't do the entire process because the lecture is 30 minutes. Uh, we will show snapshots of how to download, how to install, and then put it on your system. Then we'll discuss the different data types in QGIS and GIS, especially vectors and rasters. In this week, we will look at vectors as an analysis tool and some applications using vector data. So let's get into this week's core content. What is GIS? If you expand it, it is Geographic Information Systems and is a computer-based tool for analyzing, collecting, formatting, modeling of geographic or spatial data. This is not normal data. This, these are specific data with a spatial allocation to it. And this software allows you to overlay different data sets and query them in terms of their spatial relation between each other. For example, if I have a layer of land use land cover and I say this is Mumbai and I have urban settlements. I can also put road network on it. I can put schools, I can put colleges so you can stack it up like a cake. Now we can assess how far the distance is from the school to the nearest main road or the school to the nearest highway. So these kind of analysis is possible once you layer the data on top of each other and query. For layering, the key ingredient which holds the layers together is the spatial location. So if you know that, that's why I said Mumbai. So I'm going to have a map of Mumbai. 
all the layers are of Mumbai. I cannot put Chennai on top of Mumbai because there is no spatial relationship. So that spatial relation we are trying to establish here. And that tool is what differentiates it from a normal table data or a normal um, data that you write in books. Uh, so these are different because this has spatial location on it. So the most important I would say from this is uh, spatial data and modeling, analyzing, managing, etc. One more definition of what is GIS. Uh, it is an information uh, system <coughs> which has geospatial information. And if you look at it as a software, what is GIS software? It is a software that lets you to manipulate, convert, reformat data and manage spatial data. This word manage is very important because data can be scattered in different locations and to truncate it to one district, one zone, you need to manage it and that management can happen in GIS. The beauty is once you do it with GIS and save it as a map, then all the layers, all the layers that you stack will be saved with a path file. So you don't have to go each time and collect data and put it in. Once you open the map, all the data will come together. Essentially, it is merging of statistical analysis, database management, and digital cartography. There's a lot of analysis that you can do uh, with GIS, especially statistical analysis. And then there is database management. As I said, data can be in different, different locations and um, formats, but when you convert it to one layer and top and top of layer, then it is easy to manage. And that is what we use for digital cartography. The final uh, one we could say is um, it is a software, um, it's a combination of software, hardware, that's why it's called a system. If you just say GIS is a system, um, it, it includes a hard, a computer software, which is QGIS, for example. And then it includes your hardware, which is your computer, your scanner, etc. Data. So with the software and the hardware, there is a data that comes in and the person, the GIS user. All these have to come for a GIS system because the user controls what data comes and the user controls the software and what tools to use in the software. And then you manipulate, analyze, and present the information as a spatial location. So here the different terms here are spatial location is a geographic location. As I said, Chennai is a city. It's a location. It has lat, lot, longitude, latitude. And if I pin data to Chennai, it is anchored in Chennai, right? Information is visualization of analysis of data. You are visualizing data in GIS. It is put as maps. Numbers are there. It's not put as tables that we have different software. Here we put as maps. And the system is what links everything together like software and hardware. And the person, as I said, is us who are learning GIS and using GIS. He, she is the key to the power of GIS because it is a very creative tool. Suppose you have a paintbrush and I give you a canvas. The canvas is your GIS uh, software and, and hardware monitor, but it is you who wants to drive, you who want to paint and draw what you want. And that is the importance of the creativity, the personal is the importance of GIS applications. Let's ask this question, which I ask a lot in IIT. What is the difference between data and information? And many struggle to answer this because they think that it's the same. Uh, numbers are data and you call numbers as information. No, it is not. Data by itself differs a lot from information. Data is of little use unless it is trans transformed into something that can be comprehended as an info or an information. Information can be an answer, 
which you query or you raise a question and you use raw data to answer the question, then an information comes. We transform data into information through a software and here it is GIS or an information system. Let's take an example of population data. Everyone knows population data comes in a lot of tables once in every uh, 10 years, census data. If you just look at it as numbers, it has no meaning. There's no information com coming out. But when you query it, when you map it, then you have information coming out. For example, if a table is there of just a uh, number of uh, cities, population, male, female, okay? You just look at the data, there's nothing that comes out. If you do analysis, et cetera, then you convert it to, into an information. If I say, what is the, if I ask a question to the data, what is the percentage of male and female? That is information. If it says 60% of uh, population is males, 40% is females, that is information. It is based on the data, but data itself is not throwing any information, right? So it is always based on query and data by itself as a number doesn't make any, any um, change. Data also has a lot of timestamps. When was it taken? Is it relevant? What is the methodology that the data used, et cetera? Let's continue the short description of GIS. Let's look at the GIS process. Now we know what GIS is. It is used to convert spatial data into spatial information uh, with geospatial locations. So in the GIS process, a normal process, you define a problem. As I said, you query, you define a problem, you ask a question, and from there, you take what kind of criteria you want like define GIS criteria or the tools that you want to use or the, the complexity of GIS steps that you want to create. Then once you know the steps or, or visualize what you want to do using GIS, then you import the data for it. Okay, so import or build data sets. How do you import? you bring from remote sensing in this case. So in this case, in our lecture series, in the course content, the define the problem could be map the, or identify the uh, schools with proper road connection. Then the D GIS criteria is to map, okay? Map the location of the schools, map the roads, and then you know how many are connected. So this is the GIS criteria. Now I've told, I'm going to map the roads, map the schools. Now we have to import the data set. What data set? We need the road data set. We need the school data set. Then you do the GIS analysis. There are multiple, multiple tools that help you to identify the distance between the road and the uh, school and form clusters. How many schools, villages, clusters are attached to a particular road connection? Then you get your output. Are you done? In a normal scenario, yes. You stop the process. But the beauty of GIS is you can redefine the problem through discussions. So once you have the output, you have a decision taken. Okay, you say, okay, X number of schools, uh, like say 40% of schools have poor road network connectivity, 60% schools have good uh, road network connectivity. Now the 40% you're going to discuss or take decisions on how to increase. But the beauty, as I said, is you can keep it moving along the same path in GIS. And this cyclic process helps you to refine the data. The output that you have here becomes your importing new data set. So you have new GIS analysis. And you can keep on fine tuning the data and the results up to the point where you are satisfied. And this uh, process can go on as much as you have uh, time, data power, etc. So with this uh, short introduction, 
as I um, promised, let's look into how to download the QGIS. This lecture series is recorded in 2023. For 2023, the stable version, we're going to see what is uh, what can be used in QGIS. If this course is rerun in some other year, because we have uh, around 1,800 um, registrations already, which means the course may likely to be rerun in the following years. In that case, please go to the same website or the QGIS website and look at the stable version. Now, I will take you to this website. So I'm going to click on this. Um, it will open my web page. Okay, I'll have to share the window here, right? So when I clicked the link, you, you bring it here. If those in a different year, if the link is not working because they have updated it, just type QGIS and download, okay? And then you will have download QGIS. So do not go into other software packages and download it because it is free. It has um, no payment. So don't go to other websites where you are asked to pay or maybe some kind of bugs may come. So the best is to use .qgis.org, okay? And I've given the link, I've tested the link. So we're going to do it now, okay? So suppose this is link is working. A page like this will come, the, the first uh, page where they say that, how do you um, um, like free open source software and especially QGIS, what are the projects going, crowdfunding, get involved, volunteering, et cetera. Again, this is an open source software. So a lot of volunteers take part in building the software, okay? Members who are using it. In my last week's lecture, I picked cases from these users and show like that they are using this software even for launching rockets, sub countries. So coming back, this is the download button that you need to click. Uh, and this is the latest version that is available. Please note that the latest version need not be the most stable version. I will tell you what is the difference when we go to this page. So here you click download now. And when you click download now, there will be multiple users, open source software or a different OS users. So this is for Windows. So normally Windows, Mac, OS, Apple, Linux, BSD, tablets, etc. is there. Most people would have the Windows version. So let me click the Windows version. And you have the first green button which says download QGIS version 3.28. So this is the most richest, newest version. However, like any other software, the model gets updated regularly, which means there is a community which is updating the software by introducing new tools, better sophistication models, uh, GUI, the graphic user interface. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to use the most stable version. You can see here, which is 3.22 long-term version, okay? So do not use this, uh, the download, the green big button, which is 3.28. Uh, because for beginners, I'm saying, if you're an advanced user, yes, you can use it and then play and understand if it crashes. Uh, stable version means it has been there for long term. It has been tested and the bugs are less. Okay, Like any software, every software will have bugs. Uh, so new software will have more bugs. So don't uh, go for the newest one when you're a beginner. Go for the more stable version. Once you click it, um, a download page will come and ask where you want to download. I've already downloaded it here because um, uh, it takes long time. As I said, downloading took me uh, like 45 minutes and we cannot wait that long for class. So I've downloaded it, put it in your download uh, folder. And then there is a message which comes here about supporting QGIS if you want to. So now uh, let me open the folder where I 
store it and double click okay when i double click the version so you see that it comes up as um do you want to download okay so um and you will see yes next next okay okay so it says you already have um um a version so let me just remove the one i have I've already removed it but sometimes there will, there will be some traces of the software uh, it's a very quick software to install um, if you have downloaded the software okay so while it is uh, downloading let me go back to the slide yes where i also wanted to show you the other users uh, knowledge products in qgis web page that you can collect so now you could see that it is just uh, setting up um, the the space and then um, down, removing the traces of uh, the software okay So it will it will reinstall my software um, from from the package I have. In the meantime, we will be discussing these other things from QGIS website. Um, the link is given here. Okay, let me click it. It will go to a new page. I have to share this. Okay. Yes. In this, you have discover QGIS. In the discover part, you have it claiming that it is the leading open source desktop GIS in, in the world. So um, it is very professional. Uh, it is used by many, many people uh, and you have the applications and stuff. So this when you click get started, it goes to the download page, which you already have downloaded. The steps are you have download, check your documentation, connect with uh, QGIS community. The community is where you discuss um, the problems, the statements between the users, okay? So here's where getting help the community. I'll come to that part later, but for now, let's go here. Uh, for the users, we can download, get the installer. We have already downloaded it. It's it's going on. I'll just uh, check the status. Okay. Then what you do is you have the documentation where you have the user guide, training manual, tutorials, etc. So let's look at the user guide. In the user guide, we have what is new, uh, how does it work, three point two two, etc. etc. Right. Yes. So you can quickly download and look into this uh, different different um, uh, materials. It's like a book, but with chapters. So it's like a web page book. You can see here that how do you work with project files? Um, what does each tab mean? I will go through this in in uh, the, the this week class. So don't worry about um, learning all these by yourself. Um, but it's just the basics I give. So if you need more in depth, you can go here or there, there are links to a lot of tutorials, video tutorials. Okay. How do you handle broken path files? I, so I told you, uh, there is a lot of path files that you can do, uh, the interface GUIs, the menu bar, what is the menu bar? What is the panel bar? All these things. Okay. 
So there are very, very important uh, panels that you need to have the browser, the processing toolbox, uh, the uh, major toolbox, and then these are uh, your vector and raster tools, the layers where you put the data, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so menu bars, toolbars, panels, map view, and status bar. So this is your map view and the status, how and when it's running. So all these things you can learn as a book. This, this is a tutorial book that for QGIS, the beginners who you want can learn. Moving on, there are publications. So people use GIS and uh, publish a lot of work. So we you will be able to see um, these publications um, in this in this uh, space. Then you have support, commercial support. So even though GAQGIS is uh, free, uh, there are places where um, some companies and uh, um, entities would require a higher level of association with QGIS. So there is a commercial support also wherein they have to pay. So, but most most time you can do what you want with free open source software alone. Now you go to our community and support channels. So in this part, what you could see is you have mailing list. You can ask a question on how it works. You can you can join your put your mail uh, email into this and joining the mailing list so that uh, if you if, if there are new uh, comments and suggestions uh, you will get to know about it, right? So this part is also there, and then you have uh, different um, channels. So you have Telegram, like uh, an app where you can. Um, exchange ideas, a lot of communities. It's English, mostly in English, so you can use it. Facebook, uh, Matrix, IRC, uh, websites, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I don't have any preference, uh, but one preference I do have is how to ask a question. Uh, you can just normally go there and type your question, uh, and within a day or two, someone like a volunteer would reply to the question. So for rural development, for example, what questions can you ask? Uh, one question would be, I don't find the data set, or I don't know which tool to use for this specific application. Let's say groundwater mapping in uh, rural villages. I don't know the tool, you can say, for which the community can give you some good examples. And those examples you could definitely use for your uh, project. Okay. So these, these are how you could use it. And citations is, is, is needed. Like for example, if you have a good work, a project, you can always cite them because it helps them to get more funds saying that, oh yes, I have used QGIS. Uh, it is a good software, all these things, okay? Do you have to uh, mention QGIS? There's no requirement because that is the principle of open source, but it is good. It is welcome if you could add a note saying that made with QGIS. So in my projects, in my reports, I will just add a line saying that QGIS was used. Why? Because people should not think that, oh, it's a very complex map. You need a proprietary software to make these maps. I want everyone to use it. Everyone can reproduce the results. So for which you uh, create this kind of a software where everyone has access to it. It's very simple uh, to use uh, and it is doesn't take as much as memory and um, computing power as proprietary softwares. Normally proprietary softwares will have a lot of buttons on the side, a lot of um, talking back and forth to the internet because they want to make sure your license is correct, right? So it always communicates back and forth. Uh, whereas an open source does not care about licensing and all. So that is the part where you will have to um, understand that you are working with this um, software and it doesn't require major 
changes to your computer. So these two links I've already shared in the PowerPoint uh, where you could go and um, learn by yourself and also discover KGIS, look into the communities. You can join the WhatsApp kind of group, Telegram is kind of like a WhatsApp um, and also Stack Exchange. So the Stack Exchange is very useful. Um, uh, it is a place where you you go and ask questions a lot. So let's quickly look at um, how people are asking questions. Some of these questions might be very advanced, um, but don't worry about it. Here is a place to learn. Okay, so QGIS is there. Some people can use um, proprietary and other softwares, but QGIS you can click to see only QGIS questions. You anybody can ask questions anybody can answer so two things one is you can be anyone a student or a, a owner of a company you can ask questions and etc same anyone can answer so the credibility of the answer relies on your understanding and, and your use so normally how uh, people take a decision is like this, for example, zero answers are there. Uh, let's say one answer and the user would click the green button to say that, yes, I like the answer um, uh, and it is working well for mine, okay? So let's look at National Geographic base map for QGIS. So what is the question? The question is, I need to use National Geographic mapping for a project and I'm unable to find any documentation how do I get this into QGIS? How can I do this? Okay. So then they said there is a user who, who says there is a different version of National Geographic Maps. You can go here and put it and import it into QGIS. Therefore, it has been answered. Okay. So sometimes if there's a good answer, people don't go again and again and answer it. But if there are answers which require some updation, some, some others can go and answer. So for example, you can put here and then answer. So you could see here how uh, people uh, take time and, and happiness in spreading the knowledge for free, right? So it's a very good thing. It's called uh, Geographic Information Exchange Stack Exchange. Uh, you don't have to sign up, uh, but it's better to sign because they know who's putting questions and et cetera. There's no payment. There's no, uh, it's a community to learn. So it's everyone can learn and stuff. Okay. So with this, um, uh, I will continue the installation of the GIS software. Uh, I'll just quickly install it in the next uh, uh, version um, lecture. And then uh, I will go back to the slides. And we will see quickly on the installation of 3.22.14. We will upload it and we'll go through some of the bullets before we go into the vector database. With this, I'll stop today's lecture. Thank you.